take that data and use it to make um, informed decisions per se. So it's just a course that you go through, through the Global Academy of Finance and Management and the American Academy of Pro uh, Project Management. Uh, and uh, after that, you get uh, certified. So it's actually very interesting to learn that. Um, Microsoft Office Specialists is a course offered by Microsoft. To That goes to everyone. It's not necessarily for HR, just to get to understand uh, Microsoft. You see, like systems are changing over time and uh, there's a lot of technology that is coming in. So there are basic things that we use in HR, such as Word, Excel, PowerPoint, you know. Uh, so it's good to understand when you go through this, you get to know that there are so many resources that are untapped. There are so many things. There are so many formulas in Excel. There are so many things that you can actually do with Microsoft Word that, or Microsoft PowerPoint that probably we never had an idea. So that is... Uh, in regards to Microsoft Office specialist. Um, thank, thank you very much, uh, Joran. Last week we dealt with the Nemlex, we, te we dealt with Jad Genie, we dealt with Jad GTPT, and we were amazed at what technology can do. Is that what it can do to documents? So let us go to the first principles. What is digital documentation and what is it that we're going to do so that we can revolutionize digital documentation. Okay, thank you, Richard. Um, digital, digital documentation is, um, or I'm going to use the acronym DDP so that the uh, digital documentation platform. Yeah, so I'm just going to use DDP. Um, I'll just keep referring to it as the people join so that we get to know. Um, you see, at the moment, uh, we are shifting to what we, what is referred to as digital HR. We are coming out from the uh, so much paperwork and uh, so much shelves and um, hard copy materials. We are now moving to paperless. And uh, this has been necessitated by so many things, one of them being the COVID pandemic where you see you are not touching, not doing what, so what do you do with the so much paperwork that you have in HR? And you know that like HR, we handle so many papers. So we move to digital HR. Basically digital HR is using the technology that we have or the tools that we have to support our various processes, like recruitment, like ER, like admin, like performance management, payroll and all that. So it's just using the technology that is it uh, that is at our disposal uh, to make sure that we collaborate and uh, work as efficiently and even more efficiently than uh, we did before. So when we talk about uh, digital documentation platform, these are just software solutions that have been designed to help organizations to manage and store their documents electronically. Uh, an example of a digital documentation platform or a DDP is something like a Google Drive which I know most people are familiar with. If you have a Gmail account, you know what uh, Google Drive is, something like Dropbox, something like the HRMIS that we have, you know. So these are the some of the examples of DDPs that we have, yeah. Very good, <clears throat> very good definition, uh, John. Why should we embrace, you've said about if, what other, other reasons do we have to embrace <laughs> digital documentation besides the efficiency part? Besides, mm -hmm. Yes, why should we embrace other reasons, convincing reasons why people should invest in digital documentation? Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, one of the reasons, uh, apart from efficiency, of course, and you see uh, when you talk about um, efficiency, we are talking about uh, something like the time taken. Just give an example of um, if you are to retrieve a certificate from my hard copy file, you'd have to go locate the file where the file is, look for, open the file, scroll through, get to where the certificate is. Um, 
you see the time that it takes and the time that it takes for, for you to just click, click, click and get the certificate saved somewhere online. You can see the time difference. And the, so we're talking about efficiency. Basically, if you have digital documentation, it allows you to access and manage your documents in one central place. It makes it easier to find them and also to share information in such instances. Uh, another thing is uh, improved accuracy. Uh, when you're talking about improved accuracy, you're looking at uh, something like um, a record, uh, sorry, collaboration of documents. If there's a document that I'm working on um, and I share it with somebody, I can be able to track the changes that they've done. I can be able to see where they've edited, you know, which is different from if it were a hard copy document that I were to give to someone and then it comes back as a totally different document, you know, or something like that. So uh, talking about improved accuracy, where you can also reduce errors and inconsistencies with documents. You won't have so many documents of the same kind because you see, if you if I have a hard copy document that I've printed, another person has another copy, we have two different versions of the same document. But if we have one document that we are working on online, we are working on it centrally, you see we have, there's a lot of consistent, consistency that is going on. Talking also about uh, security, data security. See, when you talk about data security for HR, it's a very important aspect because we deal with very, very sensitive information. We have all the information regarding staff, their history, their personal records, their medical records, you know. So uh, enhanced security in terms of uh, digital documentation comes in uh, with things like passwords, you know, password protection, access control, where you can actually share a link and decide who's going to edit. You can share a link and limit the people who can actually see whatever you've shared, you know. So, and this actually comes in compliance with the Data Protection Act, which I know most of us uh, HR practitioners are aware about, the Data Protection Act that actually ensures that us as HR professionals uh, maintain the privacy of the information that we collect. So another point comes in on compliance. Yeah, so data privacy and things like that. And then we have increased collaboration, of course. Uh, we've seen trends where there has been a change, like um, I need to work from home because of one reason or another. Nowadays, we see there's a lot of uh, flexi work um, and the office has shifted. Uh, we used to see the office as a building where people used to go there from eight to five. Nowadays, the office is when anywhere where there's internet and uh, it's a conducive place. So if I were in a place that is not uh, where my company is situated, I'm still able to work. I'm still able to collaborate with somewhere, someone that is even outside the country because we are working on a digital platform as compared to if it were documents that I had to source hard copy, it means I had to be there physically and it means then I couldn't work anywhere else. Yeah, so those are some of the reasons that I can pinpoint Advance. as- Advance. Mm. Yes, yes. Good, good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is your moderator, Richard J with John talking about uh, revolutionizing uh, do documentation using technology. Now, Having understood uh, the meaning of digital documentation and then having understood the advantages of having uh, digital documentation, how do you prepare? Because it's a question of change management. The title is revolutionizing. Revolutionizing to me is about transformation, change management. How do we prepare for this revolution, for this transformation? Thank, thank you, Coach. Um, uh, everything is everything takes time, and digitalization is a change that 
happens slowly over time because you can't really force it down people's necks. People's, people have to accept it. And it's something that happens gradually. So first of all, you need to have a strategy, a change management strategy. People have to buy in to the technology that you're trying to introduce in the uh, in the workplace. So if it's um, DDP that you're trying to introduce within HR, even before you implement it, the team members need to be able to understand what it is about, need to be able to test it a bit, need to be able to give it, give, um, give their their views on what they think about uh, the DDP so that by the time you're implementing, people have bought into it, people have understood it. Uh, another thing that you need to look at is uh, technological issues. So before you decide that we want to go digital, you need to look at the, um, you need to look at the infrastructure that you have. You need to look at the compatibility that this DDP that you're going to have is going to is going to be with, with the other systems that you have because you don't want to be running about five systems parallel within HR. Yet you can centralize everything if you have systems that are compatible with each other. Another thing that you need to do is due diligence. You need to understand what this uh, DDP is going to do. You need to understand um, to what extent do you want uh, to utilize this? You need to understand the audience. You need to understand uh, the people that are going to, to be using it. You need, yeah, so that uh, by the time you come to implement it, you don't find that it's only suitable for some people and not for others. Uh, another thing that you need to do is come up with policies because um, you might implement something and tomorrow you're not there. The person who comes after you needs to be able to take over. And the only way that is going to happen is if you, if you have set policies and procedures so that you don't have uh, a system that only runs and when you're not there, it doesn't, nothing happens because people don't know how the system operates. There's no SOP. So you need to put in a uh, policy in place because the policy will also act as a guideline Jo Joan, hold on, hold on. There's somebody. Bonfas is saying he can't hear you. Okay. Uh, I don't know what could be the problem because me, I can hear you loud and clear. Bonfas, maybe you can go out and come again. I don't know how we're going to treat your case because me, I can hear her very well. I don't know who else is not hearing John. Bonfas, are you hearing now? Uh, then can from my from my end I can hear uh, John very clearly, so he may check okay. his side. Yes, check check your side, bone first. Okay, John, go on, go on. Okay. So, so um, another thing that uh, is very important to do before you introduce a DDP is training and support, because before you introduce something for people to start using you need to train these people on how the system is going to function you need to train these people on the limitations you need to train people on even how to troubleshoot some of the things that or some of the challenges that they might have so proper training and uh, continuous support is very important when you're talking about um, a digital platform you also need to look at the cost implication the cost implication, because you see, when you have a DDP, and it means that you might need to have maintenance co maintenance costs over time. You might need to upgrade at some point. You might need to add new features at some point. So uh, that is something that uh, you need to look at in the bigger picture, per se, uh, before implementation. And you also need to look at uh, the data privacy and security. What securities does this uh, DDP have? When you talk about uh, data privacy for HR and the documents that you have, you need to make sure that it's a system that is very robust. And uh, the data for the the data that you have in that system or in that uh, platform 
is maintained, the privacy is maintained. Yes. Thank you, Joan, for that elaborate uh, presentation on um, how you should prepare for digital transformation within the organization. Uh, now that you've mentioned the word, you should be very robust. Now this brings me to the question, what are the features of a good data management system or a digital management system? What features could you, maybe you could give us five so that we can be able, when we go to the market to buy a particular system, what do we look at? What are the features do we look at? Thank you, Coach. Um, when you're looking at a DDP, you need to look at a, a platform where you can be able to create documents online. So document creation is a very, very important aspect of um, a DDP. You need to look at some, if it's uh, something like creating a form online, are we able to create a form? Are we able to create a Word document online? Uh, are we able to link documents? You need to look at uh, version control. Version control here, I'm talking about, uh, am I able to convert this PDF into a Word document that I can edit and collaborate with online? Or am I able to edit this PDF online? Because you know there are editable PDFs, we have tools for that. Um, am I able to link this Excel worksheet to this Word document and uh, collaborate as one document where if I make a change in this Excel worksheet, the change will reflect in the Word, uh, word worksheet and the Word uh, document, you know. Uh, Am I able to create a presentation online without having to come to the uh, Microsoft PowerPoint app on my computer and then having to save it somewhere or have, have to upload it? Like, can I go online and create a PowerPoint presentation and share it with people online? So that is where you're talking about uh, version control. There's collaboration. Like, are we able to work on this document simultaneously? You've seen um, sheets like, I'll use an example of uh, Google Workspace, uh, where you can have a Google Sheet that is online, share it as a link. I can be editing it as someone else is working on it. And when you look at that sheet, you can actually see that Nelson is editing it, Richard is editing this page, and Joan is editing this part. Like, are we able to collaborate like that? Or is it rigid? Like does one person have to work on it and wait and save it until the other person, you know, something like that. Is it something that we can actually work on together at the same time? Um, also need to look at access control. Um, and uh, the reason you're talking about access control is because of data, data uh, privacy and security. And this is something that I'll keep mentioning over and over again because it's HR, and you know that we we deal with a lot of sensitive information. We deal with a lot of information regarding the employees. And when you're talking about a DDP, is it something that everyone will have access to? Are you able to limit access? You know. Um, and then you also need to look at um, things like te the technical issues that are related to it. The do you have backups? So another feature apart from access control is the, uh, how can I put it? The, um, how reliable, reliability is the word that I was looking for. How reliable okay, is this system, yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, what is the difference between digitization and uh, digitalization? There are people who, who do not know how to make the difference. What is the difference? Sorry? What is the difference between digitization and the digitalization? Uh, digitization is converting uh, whatever you already have, like uh, the documents that you already have into a uh, soft copy form. Say for example, taking something and then you scan it into a soft copy form. 
<laughs> then digitalization is adopting technology to use in your everyday processes, like whatever you're talking about now, going digital. But digitization is just converting like uh, hard copy documents into soft copy documents. Now that we have understood uh, the meaning of uh, digital documentation, the benefits, the specifications, the preparation, what are some of the drawbacks of uh, digitization of documents? What are the negative sides? Because every system has a problem that needs to be challenged. Uh, thank you, Coach. Uh, one of the one of the challenges that we might face in the process of going digital is technology, technological issues. And um, these are some sometimes things that we can't uh, prevent, like downtime, you know, security breaches, and which can impact our processes. So uh, we have technical issues. Uh, there are some technical issues, though, that uh, we can foresee and you can prevent like data loss. Data loss you can prevent by having uh, backups, but there are some things like downtime, you know, the server is down. So uh, you wait until the server is up so that you are able to, to get your data again. But that is one of the challenges that we face in uh, going digital. Another one is the integration of the existing systems. So, you might find that you have a, a DDP that cannot be integrated with the current systems that you have in place. So that poses a challenge because then it means that you're going to be running parallel systems so that you're able to have a complete life cycle in HR. So, and that is where we're talking about before you implement a DDP, you make sure that you do your due diligence uh, to make sure that it's compatible before you purchase or before you implement. Uh, another concern is uh, data privacy and security where most people will talk about, you know, you're putting things online, you're putting things on the cloud. How can we be assured that we have, that our data is private, you know, that our data is secure? So uh, here is where the organization needs to ensure that the they are put in proper measures, you have a proper firewall, you have, you know, proper passwords, you limit access to some of the information and things like that. And um, another challenge also that might come up is costs. And um, costs can come in in terms of, uh, first is the purchasing of this DDP. Uh, implementing it because if you're talking about implementing and you're talking about uh, by implementing you need to train people and offer continuous support there's a cost that comes with it so here in one of the challenges we look at the cost bit of it the cost of acquiring it uh, because probably you'll want to you will not go for the free free ones that are offered online you'll want to purchase a premium a premium uh, platform. So there's a cost that will come with it. And this is probably a recurring cost because maybe once every year you'll need to, to renew it. Yeah. So that is one of the things that uh, that will you can encounter as a challenge. Another one that is very common is of course resistance from the people that are already there. You see, um, you find that people are used to how things happen. So when you, if you're used to hard copy files, uh, you know, fetching things, printing things and, you know, hard copy, and then you come and tell us to share a link, you know, there's a lot of resistance that, that might come with that. <laughs> and uh, especially if you, uh, if you have people that have not really embraced uh, technology, you might get a lot of resistance, but, that is where you need to come in and make the people buy into the system first before you even go to implementing it. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Joan Tonui, this is Richard J, your moderator.
Now that we have understood what is digital documentation, we have understood the benefits of digital documentation, we have understood how we should prepare for digital documentation, we have understood the drawbacks of digital documentation, we want to dive in into the practical aspect of digital documentation. Nelson, are you ready for a demo? Yes, uh, Jelika, I'm ready. Welcome on board. Let me just Thank share you. my screen. Mm. Confirm that my screen is visible. Yeah, it is. It is green, it is white, there is green and white. Yeah. <laughs> so we said that today we're going to experience a work pay system and see. So now, sometime back I used to do filing. Actually, just to say, uh, the whole of last year, I never had any paper on my desk because my, my role uh, was only around systems and analysis. So I never had papers. So leaving the office and going back to the office wasn't difficult and thanks to technology. So all of us, we can actually embrace the same. Should your employer be happy with systems, then you're in the right place. So it's a good thing that you need to embrace systems. And previously to that, I used to do filing and I had even mastered that picking one paper from the desk, going to find the file for this person and uh, punching this and putting it in the file and returning the file back to the cabinet, it will take me five minutes. Sometimes because I was efficient, it would take me three minutes. So I would actually do my work and say that for me to do filing, so like you can have a staff of 200 employees, each one of them is getting salary increment letter. So how long will it take you to do filing system? We're talking about that. If you could have a system that can actually do all those together, then it would be uh, easier. So now I have a system here called WorkPay and WorkPay is a HR system that that uh, is all inclusive. So I can just show you what they currently have. It is, uh, they, they have the employee. So in all systems, there is a part for core HR. So don't let anyone sell for you core HR only. Because if you're buying a HR system, it you must have core HR. Core HR is where you will keep in the employee details. Yeah, the employee details, your employees that you have. So the core HR will help you with that. So then they also have payroll in it. They have expenses. Expenses is you to track employee expenses. So as HR, there are those that will go into payroll. So you want to do your mini petty cashier. Then there is leave management. There is employee benefits management. Payments is uh, how now you pay these, uh, how, how you make digital payments to, to the bank. Also here. Then they have got the reports that is generally needed. So if you go under reports, you see that they are having the report that you require for payroll the report that you will require for payments and all that, they're all here. And actually we're working on something in terms of support with the NEA also. They have got attendance, time attendance that you can also uh, use. And remember attendance, payroll and leave are always one thing. Payroll, leave and attendance, time attendance are always one thing because each of them will need each other to function properly. So. It's if you have seen that I've got all those, then that's okay. Then there is assets management. If you're giving uh, your staff uh, computer and all of that, then now we have documents where you save documents. And we're saying that employee documentation doesn't only start with uploading a document to the file to the to the system, but think of how the employment form that you always issue. We do issue employment forms, yeah, to employee to fill in their personal details. So you can actually upload things in a, you first put in Excel, then you upload into the system. Yeah. Or you can come and start creating a new employee here. So I hope you can see the pop-up screen. Add employee. Richard, you can be seen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I can see that I'm having add a new employee. So now instead of issuing those papers that you do issue, the people can fill in, then you can come here and update this very fast, create the employee details here, so that you're able to create the profile, the employment status, 
payment details and contact details. So because this because within WorkPay, I'm starting from creating an employee. But within HRMET, we saw that there is a place where you can convert uh, an interviewee to employee. So meaning that you might not go through all this. But again, WorkPay works with the other systems. What Joan talked about, integration. So how do we integrate ATS with WorkPay? So that whenever you have hired Nelson, you just come and say, convert to an employee. So that these fields are actually populated. So whenever you create an employee to this system, it will come to a pending employee because it is created. So the, 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 the employee will be pending because you must activate that employee. So when you activate the employee, meaning you will be enabling them to be part of your team. So these are talking about, are you able to make sure that everybody in your team has got what to do and you can actually limit whatever they do in the system. So it means that you create a file, but, if, but before the file created into the cabinet, someone have, must have a look at it. So that's what we do here in that you create an employee, but before the employee comes to active, it must still go to pending and someone else with, the, with additional rights will come and say, activate. So confirm you want to activate Canon Terry. So I will say, yes, I want to call, I'm confirming that. So, and a good system will always tell you, employee set has submitted successfully and this one is in green. So what are talking about in terms of interface? Remember we're talking about interface, what you see. Some, some systems tell you success and they bring in a different color that is even red and success. So what, what does red mean in our in our day-to-day -day as part of our learnings? Is that red is not a good color. It's a color that shows the, there's danger, yeah? So this one is also telling you success and it's green. So actually you know that this one has, has, gone, uh, has gone in successfully. So now when you come to employees, you can see that now our employee number has increased for seven. So Terry Cannon is now here as part of our employee. So remember that you've, you've already put in Terry Cannon's detail into the system. We're saying that systems will help you even when doing your reports very fast. So compare now if you have to go back to the files to, to find who is where and who is doing what. Because you can see that within the system, you already have analytics. Yeah, it's giving a quick dashboard. So the dashboard is telling you how many employees are, are, are active. How many have been exited? How many are on the notice to exit? Meaning that they're still having their notice period. How many are pending? How many are inactive? Yeah? So our total employees. So you can actually come in very fast and see your, and see your data. Because I think that you've already uploaded the, the employee documents or the employee details into a system. So it makes your work easier, yeah? So uh, HR, HR that is well configured will actually give you proper analytics into what you have. So again, I'm saying that now, what we we'll what we'll always do in terms of filing. So we have already just done some few data entry here, meaning this form might not even need to go to the file. Or the finance person will not have to key the data fresh. What they'll be doing will just be confirming whether whatever has been entered into the system is actually correct, then print photocopying a paper. You saw sometimes back a payroll file where you, where you would, would photocopy and details and take them to finance for payroll because you are preparing their finance will pay. So they want to see this person. So instead of copy paste your uh, 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 photocopying, then you can give access, grant access to the finance manager or the payroll manager to come and now see who came in and who is exiting. So they can actually, from the system itself, nobody's moving any papers anywhere. And remember, the more the papers move, the more the confidentiality is reduced. Yeah, because it can fall uh, into the wrong person's hands. So now our, the system itself will actually be capturing live data, meaning as they are generated. If I was to go and leave, then I will apply on leave immediately. So I won't apply on a paper, yeah, then someone else, will go back and update in the Excel or in, uh, or in the literal, meaning that it's already capturing upon generation. So if I was to apply leave today, then it will actually allow me to generate that leave report, uh, uh, generate the leave form, apply online and let it be there. So that's what I was talking about a system that actually enable you to 
do this. So because you're not here to apply leave, and so I want to say that if you're, not, if you're now you are supposed to do filing, how will a system help you to do filing? And how is the, how easy will it be? Uh, some time back, I was called, I've also had experience with the labor officers when they come to audit your files. I don't know why they do it nowadays, as it long as I saw them. So it is that they would want to come and see the files that you are having of the, so they give you a list of them that you need to give them files. What happens is that you have to carry those files, take them to where they are. If they're in the offices in, uh, uh, I can't remember the office name, the, the building name, then you Nyayo have- Nyayo House. <laughs> Nyayo House, right? Mm. Yeah, so you have to carry some few files to Nyayo House or the county labor office, yeah? So now we're saying that, do we really need to carry papers in this economy? And or in this time and age, I'm saying that you can just carry your computer there, which is uh, less than even two kg. You carry your two kg computer there. Then, if now they ask for employment documents, so you'll come and show them employment documents for employees. So let's say that now we just added in. Uh, let's look at someone who doesn't have documents. Okay, everybody has got documents, but you can still search someone here under their document. So an employee comes in. They have shared with you the certificates, good conduct certificate, ID, and all those that need that you always asking for that, that, that need to have. So, how do you make sure that these files are downloaded? So, the system. So, one thing that you have to do, you have to save them in your computer. You must save them in your computer first. Then now you can come and add documents. Yeah. So now if I click on the add a document, it will give me an interface to add what I want to add. So now I can come here and now say, I want to add for Canon Terry, the person that we just added. So Canon Terry has just been uh, employed. And now the category here of the employee is a, is a under company manual. So the document title, what do I want to upload? So I want to upload the photo. So I would say the passport, passport photo, passport size. photo. So you may want to explain what is this size photo. You can give your explanation there with what you feel like. Yeah. So if you want, you have something to fill, you can fill in there. Yeah. So you so you, you may say, so again now, in that you, you can describe what the passport photo is all about, or when naming documents, okay, that's what we're talking about document Naming what the one was talking about in terms of versions of the document. So you can you can decide in your company how do I want to name how do I want to do uh, the versions of documents. So let's say that this passport the first time that I'm having the passport. So first time documents I will have to add passport photo. Then I can do one point one because it's the first time I'm uploading this passport photo. So I so can do one point one for this employee. So that whenever now, next time I come and put another photo, I would say that it's a dated photo, so I can do 1.2, because the same, same person, so it's 1.2. So until such a time that you'll say that, ah, now I want to, I don't want to have this person's photo, let us have something else instead of the photo. Then say that instead of picking passport size photos, we dropped it, so we don't have anything like that. Or we exchanged another documentation to be brought in to the department. So we are, so we are saying that now, Within here, so I'll give some notes if I have to, and then I can browse the files. I will browse my file here and say under documents, and come and say employee upload. So I have, so I have my documents here for, for Canon Terry, and come and say that I want to upload the passport photo here. So I open. So it's now sending me to submit. So once I submit this document, it is now saying that Terry, so now our Canon Terry has got one document here, which you can click here and see what do we have? Passport photo 1.2 under company, Google edit. So you can see that created at what time, by who? So there you can see that you're also controlling who is doing what in, the, in this. So we can know who did that. And actions, you can actually come back and edit. You can view, you can view the document itself. What was this? It was passport. Can I see the passport photo? So you can actually come here and view the document. So this is where we uploaded into the system. So maybe you can add in something for Terry again. So we will go back to our documents here. So 
So now, uh, at this point here, we also want another, uh, so another document and our employees, Terry Cannon here again, and it was, uh, she was under company manual. So the document titled here could be now the ID. So copy of ID, so national, so national ID. We say that now we are many, we are now managing our documents online so that to ensure that we, whenever we want them, we can just speak. So there's a name certificate, but let's just bring it in. So I'm having this ID under submit. So you can see how easy it will be so that within a shortest time, within the shortest time, I'll be able to see that already Terry has got all documents. Just sorry for that. So now if I click on this arrow here, I'll be able to see that now she has got passport as photo, an ID also is there. And I can actually come back and edit what I what I can edit. So it is good for us to have systems that can actually help us in, man in managing employee documentation. And another one, we, we, we will do even OneDrive, Google Drive. We also see how we can manage the same thing online. But saying that now that you are looking into HR management systems, how do we? How do we use the system that you already have so that we limit also things that people use? So remember that you can also have so many systems in our company, if people get confused, which one are we using in this company or which login systems do I have to log in into this system? So with Workday, we are able to upload documents, manage them from, manage them from there, and actually know who has done what and at what time. So you'll be able to see what's happening within those documents and I can actually track. So the, there'll be a tracking in case in case we, we change, we, we can just we can try it and see if I were to change this. We want to edit and say it was supposed to be passport one. Yeah, yeah, so if we change it that way, then now now it's changing 1.1 and also giving us yes. time that the, when, when it was created and that's how it is so again, you can come and delete the document. So if you delete it, it will disappear from the system. So this is the best way that you can actually have our documents maintained. It's an easy way of doing our doing our documentation. You don't need to run around with files. Files don't even consume space. The office becomes uh, too small because you have a lot of things that is uh, that are everywhere. So this is how we manage our papers in the in the company and be able to do our documentation. And we're saying that with HRMIS, documentation happens at the generation point. As you generate a document, meaning if you have to generate leave application, it will go into the document. If you have to generate attendance, meaning people are clocking in and out, it is already recording into your system directly. So, so we don't need again to do it some other time. Those days we need to call registers. So and so present, so and so present, absent. Coming, coming late. So today you don't have to do that. Just go to the system, show your face, or give it your finger. Then it will actually uh, pick in the fingerprints and record that you are in attendance. So that's what uh, we have today from the system perspective, HRMIS perspective. And uh, I want to believe we have learned from that. So Jenny, can take, I'm getting back to you. Richard? Sorry, this is Richard J. Thank you very much. Uh, to Nui, Joan, and our award-winning Nelson Oguda. Uh, the question that Dorothy wants to know, Dorothy Nyangaresi, where do you take the documents that have been scanned now that you have virtual documents? Where do you take them? Jo Joan, that is your question. Uh, thank you, Richard. Um, Dorothy is asking, what do you do to the hard copies that you have scanned or used to get data for the system? Uh, yeah. uh, if you have a yeah, if you have a system that um, supports uh, attachments, I think it's very prudent to attach these documents as attachments, so that uh, it's like you have a physical backup of the hard copies that you have. In as much as you have 
keyed in this data or uploaded it, uh, it's good if you have a system that uh, accepts the attachments, you attach these documents to the system. Uh, another way that you can keep these documents is if you have a um, centralized place that you keep your documents like a shared drive, you can create folders in there and save these documents as soft copy versions in the shared drive where you can even if you don't have access, if you don't have internet and you have access to this folder, you can keep them there um, and you can easily access them. You see, if I have scanned my employment contract, I don't really need to go to my file if I have scanned it and have saved it somewhere on a shared on a shared uh, folder where we can collaborate. So you can attach them as attachments online. You can create a folder and save them where you can collaborate with uh, your team members where we can share. You see, if you have a folder that is that you can collaborate, you can always sh uh, share this folder as a link. Yeah, you don't really have to attach things on email nowadays. You can always share a link. And if the person has access, they can easily access that folder and see whatever you're sending. Yeah. Very good. Uh, I want uh, Dr. Francis to unmute and say something. What do you think of the discussion we have had? Dr. Francis Kangure, you can unmute and say something. All right. Maybe, yes. Maybe. Uh, yes. Sorry? I'm saying as, as you wait. Eh? Yes. We are being asked questions here. Yes, I've uh, seen. That, that, that actually will lead us to our next topic. For next uh, for next session, which will be looking at data protection, data, data protection in line with the Act and also with cyber security, because whatever we are also seeing here in terms of data security that we need to look into into the system, and also those of us who are still keeping their documents on uh, on cabinets, so that we look at it. How do we keep them safe apart from just using the system that we already have? Remember, you can, remember you can upload the system data into the system, but they are weak in terms of uh, they are weak or they are prone to hacking. So what do you need to do? So we also need to bring in a cybersecurity person to come and talk to us on the same, to prepare us as HRs to be, to be well aware of this. So I've seen someone asking, in terms of backup, where do we, how do we do that? Now, uh, there are various ways of doing backup. You can have your own hard drive and do the backup for yourself. But nowadays people are doing this in the cloud where we are having a, a place like a Amazon Web Services, which is also a hosting platform. They also can use the, their saving space. You can also back up your data there. So, so you can back your data in various, uh, within various cloud, uh, cloud uh, storage services. So you might have your data, some of the data in uh, Google Drive. Some of them should be in. OneDrive, some of them should be in the HRMIS, depending on how, how, how safe you want to feel or how happy you want to feel with them being distributed. But again, we'd advise you that it's not good to distribute them all again in various areas unless you're satisfied about that. Then someone is asking here, why choose this software? Why, why, do you, why should we choose a, a WorkPay, HRMX, HRMIS versus Workday, which is well established. It's okay. Uh, I want to use an example that one of my friends used when we were launching our app during uh, the launch. And he was saying that within every ecosystem, there is always levels. Yeah. yeah uh, 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 levels. So, so, it's, so he gave an example and said that there are Mercedes and BMWs of this world, there are Toyotas of this world of this world, and even within the Toyota, there are still other levels. So it will just be you to choose what you'd want to pick. And again, uh, uh, if, if, if we want to sell out to you why you should be choosing our work pay, HR Mates or uh, FinClock HRMIS is that 
One is that they're, they're giving out their system. They are, they are very sure about the systems that they have allowed us to come train with them, meaning that they are sure about their functionality. About their functionality. Then number two, whatever we are doing here, they can do. Whatever work they will do for you, they can do. And I'm telling you, I'm also interacting with work day actually in performance management. And this thing that I've shown you uh, that, we, that we also have here in our platform that we are using to train, they'll also be used to training. Now, the bigger thing that will help you whether to go for work pay, work day, most of it will always be on the budget part of it. How much do I need to pay for these services? So that's why sometimes you'd want to choose, some companies will choose work day, some will choose work pay, but all of them will be HR systems but now depending with at what scale are also looking at it in terms of you buying the system and how much are you willing to spend again? Yes. You have, Lucy and Abigail, do you have something to say to Joan? Lucy. Yeah, they are breaking. They are, they are breaking. Good. Uh, Joan, your parting shots as we come close to the end of our presentation, then I'll make an announcement. Uh, Joan, parting shots. Okay, um, I want to thank everyone for showing up today for this uh, discuss discussion. It's been very intriguing and um, I've learned a few things myself from the demonstration that uh, Nelson has done. And uh, it's always a learning process and it's good to see that there are so many people in HR now that are, you know, um, accepting technology, embracing technology. And I think that is where we are headed to as HR, we are going digital. And um, it's really a good initiative by uh, Nelson. Thank you very much for having these sessions every Thursday. And uh, we look forward to uh, much, much more. Thank you everyone. And uh, I hope you learned a thing or two today. Thank you very much, uh, Joan Tonui. You've been wonderful. Nelson, there is some coffee. Tell us about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, our our coffee that we are having. Yes, uh, I want to invite the team that is also here that they need to join us on 10. It's coming from the HR Management Hub. That that group that we are in, I've also shared the link there. It's a wonderful group that you should be part of because all that you see most of us doing out here are brewed into from that uh, the from that group it will really help you as a professional. So we are saying that we are going to have our coffee date here in Nairobi on 10th at 700 shillings. So 700 shillings is just for you to buy your own coffee, not actually paying for the event, but buying your own coffee. So that when we meet, we discuss as, a, as HR, understanding your craft. So like we're talking about HR systems here. So how good are you at HR systems? And what should you be doing? Apart from just attending the sessions, what should you be doing on the side to make sure that you understand this? So you are you, you are able to you are able to if you're able to pay, please pay by by seven. I think it's by seven. Yeah, and that is next week on Tuesday, so that we can make arrangements for you and join us for this coffee. We did one last year, we did two last year, we are going to do four this year. So be into the first one and wish all of us happy new year actually. Yes. Thank you very much, John. Participants, you can unmute and say bye-bye in your language. And uh, let's hope God wakes up tomorrow so that we can be able to do other things as we wait for the next Thursday. So you can unmute yourself and say good night bye. in which bye. language that you bye. want. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So in bye. whichever language, we will uh, synchronize. Bye. <laughs> bye. 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 Thank you very much.